much cuteness can you handle? Oh, these cats. They're so adorable. I just want to hold them tightly. Wait, am I the only one feeling like this? Why do we always want to squeeze something cute or eat it up? Scientists have studied the characteristics of what we perceive as cute. But could too much cuteness cause us to do something bad? And what is cuteness aggression? This is your body on cuteness overload. Conrad Lawrence, an Austrian zoologist and ethologist, studied the science of cute. He created a model called Kinchin Schema, or Baby Schema, to define what we consider cute. His studies found that small body size, large eyes, and round, cuddly features are characteristics of human and animal babies. These adorable features trigger nurturing instincts in our brains to take care of them. The scientific field studying cuteness is growing as more research comes to light. But before we get into that, do you know where the word cute appeared for the first time? Was it in the 1700s? In the 1900s? In the 1950s? We'll have your answer later in this episode. Cuteness triggers. As you scroll through TikTok or Instagram, do you find yourself watching kittens, this clumsy puppy, or this sleeping baby? These are what we call cuteness triggers. Each person has a unique stimulus subject that sets off this cuteness reaction process in their brain. You don't love me! For some people, even ugly things can be cute. Ah, they're so ugly, but I can't look away. Uh. SpongeBob SquarePants and Furbies also fall into this ugly cute category, known as Kimo Kawaii in Japan. It initially developed in response to traditional cuteness. I'm ugly and I'm proud. Cuteness overload. If you find yourself in a room surrounded by puppies, you might suffer what is known as cuteness <laughs> overload. All this fluffy cuteness is causing your brain to release lots of dopamine, the feel-good hormone. There are no lasting consequences or damaging effects to lots of cuteness. Even at maximum overload, your brain won't short circuit. So keep those puppies coming. Improved concentration. Well, here's the good news. Did you know that viewing cute faces will improve your concentration? Well, maybe not if you're daydreaming about your high school crush during class. Experiments have shown that viewing cute faces improves focus. It can also hone your fine motor skills, which can be helpful for handling infants. Yeah, taking a break with some baby penguins might help you get an A on your test. Ah, oh, there's a widow. <laughs> so, where did the word cute come from? It was first used in the 1700s as a shortened version of acute, which back then meant being clever or sharp. <laughs> Cuteness aggression. While watching these cute videos, you might all of a sudden grab a blanket or clench your teeth very tightly. You are experiencing what we call cuteness aggression. It's that feeling when something is so cute you can squeeze it or bite it. This is what we call dimorphous expression in the brain. You're experiencing a strong emotion, such as happiness, but you're expressing the opposite emotion. Despite the name, you won't act out in aggression if you see too much of your cuteness trigger. It's just a harmless overstimulation of your brain's emotional side. It acts out to compensate 
and bring you back to an emotional baseline. You might not even realize that you're doing it. But this trait is not universally present in all humans. The business of cuteness. The science of cute has been used as a marketing strategy by organizations to help drive sales and business growth. Scientists say consumers are more indulgent after seeing cute products. <laughs> I blame you, Pillsbury Doughboy. Also, beware of toy makers. Freeze! So, it's easy to scroll through videos of cute things, but moderation is key to avoid getting overstimulated. Let's take a break and look at something else. How about watching some ASMR videos for 24 hours to help you unwind? Well, we'll see what happens on another episode of Your Body. <laughs> <laughs>